and welcome to Standard Precautions and Beyond, Conversations in Infection Prevention and Control, a podcast of the Alabama Regional Center for Infection Prevention and Control Training and Technical Assistance, or ARC-IPC. My name is Nina Nabavi, and I'm a program manager with the ARC-IPC at the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Public Health. With three different respiratory illnesses circulating across communities in the United States, are we out of the frying pan and into the fire? Last month, we recorded a podcast with Dr. Suzanne Judd, the director of the Lister Hill Center for Health Policy and a professor in the School of Public Health at the University of Alabama at Birmingham to talk about the new Omicron subvariants and bivalent boosters. While COVID is still a concern and we should anticipate COVID to continue to circulate this winter, other respiratory viruses are making headlines. Hospitals throughout the country are dealing with an unprecedented spike in both flu and respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. Historically, peak flu activity occurs between December and March. However, according to the latest weekly influenza surveillance report released on November 26, there have already been at least 8.7 million cases of illness, 78,000 hospitalizations, and over 4,500 deaths from flu this season. RSV cases are also surging and flooding hospitals. Typically, RSV peaks between November and March, but as of today, when we're recording this podcast, December 6th, some hospitals are even reporting that their beds are full. The collision of these three viruses have raised concerns about a potential tridemic this winter. To help answer some of our questions about these viruses, we have invited Dr. Molly Fleece, Assistant Professor in the Division of Infectious Diseases and UAB Medicine Associate Healthcare Epidemiologist to join our podcast. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. So to get us started, can you talk to us about what you are seeing right now in terms of those three viruses that I mentioned earlier, COVID, the flu, and RSV cases in Alabama? Sure. So what we are seeing are rising rates of viral infections and particularly respiratory viral infections that are increasing and increasing fast. And so, as you've already alluded to, the CDC updates their influenza-like illness, or ILI, database um, each Friday. And our most recent data is from the week of November 20th through 26th. And on that database, they do break down ILI activity levels by state. Um, And what we are seeing in Alabama are very, very high rates of influenza-like activity. Um, This data captures patients presenting with fever, cough, sore throat, so signature respiratory viral symptoms. Uh, It does not break down necessarily flu, COVID, and RSV, but it encompasses all three of those. And right now, our rates are about 7.5%. This has us in the purple for widespread activity, And as a comparison, our baseline activity or what we might expect around this time is around 3%. So well above and beyond what we saw, um, what we would expect and what we saw at this time in seasons past, including last year and the year prior. So thinking about each of these respiratory viruses individually, You know, in Alabama, um, our flu rates are extremely high. Um, We have had 13 influenza-associated deaths, 10 in adults, and three pediatric patients so far this flu season. And we are, like you said, closely monitoring our hospitalization rates for flu, COVID, and RSV. So I think we are in the thick of a very scary and dangerous viral respiratory season. And now that we are two weeks post Thanksgiving or so, um, we are closely monitoring the situation to see um, what trends may do in the next upcoming weeks. Well, and that really leads in nicely to my next question about the impact on hospitals, including pediatric hospitals in our area. And healthcare systems on the state, given that the rate is so high? Yeah, so hospitalization rates, not only for um, pediatric or children's hospitals, but as well for adult hospitals are extremely high. Um, It doesn't take much to turn on the news or to look on Google and see reports from around the country of hospitals that are um, 
very, very crowded, very long wait times in the ER, um, ICUs that are extremely full and looking for other outlets to decompress so that way they can take care of um, these very sick patients. So here in Alabama, we are no different, unfortunately. Um, and at the end of November, there was a news press release um, that was released from the Children's Hospital Association, which also includes Children's of Alabama and the American Academy of Pediatrics, asking for um, national assistance to declare a state of emergency. And that state of emergency is focused purely on the surge of hospitalizations um, and support for all of these circulating respiratory viruses. So this is something that I haven't uh, seen in seasons past when it comes to all of these other viral illnesses that are circulating. Certainly COVID was um, a scary time in the beginning with different peaks and surges, but we have not seen a confluence of respiratory illnesses like we are seeing right now in years prior. So what do you think is driving the spike in these respiratory illnesses like RSV and flu? So much so, you know, that we haven't seen this in many years past. So I think a couple of things. One um, has to do with the um, behavioral changes that we are seeing in people around our country and state um, that are different from seasons prior. So for traditional winter and traditionally thought about flu seasons in the past couple of years, um, that was during times when we were more rigorous with our masking, um, social distancing, um, testing prior to large group gatherings, etc. And really, by those behavioral changes, we did not see much circulating respiratory virus outside of the peaks of COVID. So flu seasons in the past couple of years were very, very low, um, and, as well as RSV. Now that we've had some behavioral changes, we also are in the season change when we expect these um, winter viruses to show their faces around the country, um, as well as the variant changes with regard to COVID. Um, I think all of this plays a role as to why we are seeing these uh, particular respiratory viruses surging as we are. With RSV in particular, um, children typically get infected with RSV when they're young. And after exposure and infection, um, they do develop some degree of immunity. But because of our respiratory precautions that we have been enforcing in the past few years, many of these young children have not been exposed to this virus. And so now that these restrictions are lifted, people are more lax in their masking primarily. Um, many more children are being infected, many younger children are being infected, um, and that also allows for more exposure to some of those other high-risk groups, thinking about older adults, older adults with medical comorbidities. So there are a lot of factors that go into play as to why we are seeing COVID, influenza, and RSV surging around the country at this point in time. And I know, you know, RSV is typically as you mentioned, considered um, a pediatric virus, mostly affecting children under the age of five. I think I read a statistic that most children under the age of two have gotten RSV at some point in their life. But if more children are getting RSV, that also means that more adults will be exposed to RSV, correct? So are there segments of the adult population where RSV is of particular concern? There are, and you raise a, an excellent point, which is the more children that are exposed and sick, especially going into the holidays where we have you know, larger gatherings of extended family, when older adults who may not be around these young children typically um, may be exposed. And so in an average adult, an average healthy adult, someone who may get RSV infection, um, typically they present with fairly mild cold-like symptoms, but that doesn't mean that they can't develop a more serious um, lung infection or pneumonia. In certain subsets of the adult population, thinking about 
adults over the age of 65 or those with chronic heart or lung disease or in adults with a weakened immune system. Um, thinking about asthma, COPD, heart failure, um, these adults can certainly develop severe RSV infections and it may lead to uh, needing to be in the hospital and some adults do die from RSV. So whereas we do think about RSV typically in children, um, it does play a significant role in some of our more vulnerable adult populations. So Dr. Fleece, what are your predictions for the rest of the fall and the winter? I know we're you know, in fall gearing up for winter, gearing up for more holidays in the next couple of weeks. Should we be worried about a, a tridemic? Or are we in a tridemic right now? I keep seeing that phrase on the news or um, on different websites. Is that something we should be worried about? I think we should. And I, I think you're absolutely correct. I think what we are seeing right now is a tridemic. Um, our healthcare system is being stretched at all levels. Our outpatient clinics are very, very busy, especially the pediatric clinics. Um, our hospitals, adult and children's hospital alike, are very full. And we are seeing extremely sick patients with COVID, flu, and RSV, um, as well as every other illness and medical condition that we normally see throughout the year. And so I think that we are in the midst of a tridemic. Um, it is something that I remain worried about. And I am uh, closely watching what these trends in influenza-like illness and then our more specific data around COVID, flu, and RSV do now that we are like I said, about two weeks or so after Thanksgiving, and then going into more of the holiday season when we know that there will be larger family gatherings, larger group gatherings, um, and other celebrations that might bring some of the more vulnerable people in our population together with others who um, may be exhibiting signs and symptoms of a respiratory virus. So what steps can someone take now to protect themselves and their children against these respiratory diseases? So with COVID, I think we learned a lot of great and valuable lessons and all of those lessons are at play here. Um, we do know that masks are effective and helpful at reducing the spread of respiratory viruses. Um, so I would encourage people, especially those who are more vulnerable to developing severe illnesses related to either COVID flu or RSV um, to remember their mask, especially if it's something that they may have let go in the weeks and months prior. Um, I still think masking is very effective. I would also really encourage people to test, uh, particularly for COVID, um, before seeing loved ones. And if they are sick, if they are having respiratory symptoms, to consider being tested for other of the respiratory viruses like COVID, uh, flu and RSV as well. I think one thing that we really need to reinforce is if you are sick, having symptoms of a respiratory virus, to please stay home. Um, no one likes to miss holiday gatherings, but the risk of exposing Others, and especially those more vulnerable people in our population, is not low. Um, if you do go to your holiday gathering um, sick because of RSV or flu and just not having been tested to identify what it is. So I would encourage everyone to stay home if they are sick. Please do not go into work. Please do not go into school. Please avoid the holiday gathering if you don't feel well. And then the other tool that we have in our toolbox that I think is extremely important are that we have vaccines for COVID and flu. We do not have a vaccine for RSV yet. It is being uh, worked on very quickly in our scientific community, and there are some promising candidates out there. But we do know that our COVID vaccines as well as our flu vaccines are very effective. And so we've talked a lot about COVID vaccinations in the year prior. Um, I think this is an excellent opportunity to review your vaccine history. If you are up to date, that is great. Um, if you are due for a COVID booster, it is not too late to get that booster, and I would encourage you to do it. With flu, I think that it's been something that we haven't talked about as much in the last couple of years, just because we haven't seen as much influenza. 
But it's important to remember how effective and how helpful our influenza vaccines are each year. And so we know from many studies across many years that flu vaccines are helpful not only to protect you from getting sick from influenza, but even if you do get the flu after you're vaccinated, you are much, much less likely to end up developing severe disease, to end up in the hospital, or to die from influenza. What we are seeing across the country right now is that most of our circulating influenza strains are influenza A. And the majority of these sub-variants of flu um, are very similar and would be included in this year, season's flu vaccine in terms of spectrum of protection. And so I am hopeful that our flu vaccine efficacy this year will be very, very good. But in order for it to be helpful, we need people to get vaccinated. So if you have not yet been vaccinated for influenza, it is not too late. I would strongly encourage you to seek out a vaccine, whether with your uh, medical provider, urgent care clinics, or pharmacies. That's a great message because I know, you know, the messaging is to get your flu vaccine as early as possible, but I like how you said it's not too late. Absolutely. Well, we're about to wrap up this podcast, Dr. Fleece. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with um, our listeners before we wrap up? I would just encourage everyone to stay aware of what is going on in our communities um, and to really consider um, how you can best protect yourself and your loved ones this holiday season so that way everyone can have the best celebratory holiday as possible. Um, I would strongly encourage everyone, if you are sick, again, to stay home and really think about getting vaccinated if you have not yet. Ask your loved ones if they have been vaccinated, help encourage them to get vaccinated as well. And stay on the lookout for what we are seeing in terms of state and nationwide trends with regard to COVID, flu, and RSV. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Fleece, for this timely and informative podcast. You've provided a lot of great information about Tridemic this winter and ways to protect ourselves and our children from flu, COVID, RSV, and other respiratory illnesses. I appreciate your time, and I hope that we can invite you back on the podcast sometime in 2023. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Happy to. And thank you for listening. Please tune in next time for another episode from Standard Precautions and Beyond, Conversations in Infection Prevention and Control. Mm-hmm.